Now, in this unassuming building in central London, just a stone's throw from University College Hospital, is the capital's only remaining university zoological museum, uh, something of a refuge from the chorus of ambulance sirens outside. Uh, it's called the Grant Museum of Zoology. There are some 68,000 specimens from the animal kingdom uh, inside. It's a wonderful uh, Victorian interior, gallery, lots of uh, steel girders, but the most striking thing is these uh, hundreds of Display, wooden display cases uh, containing every imaginable type of uh, uh, preserved animal and fossil. We're going to have a look at some of them in just a moment. Uh, but I'm with Jack Ashby, who's the museum's uh, manager, who's going to explain a little bit about how this collection came about. When was it founded and why, Jack? So it, it was founded in, in 1828, which makes it one of the oldest natural history collections in the country. And it was founded by a man who really no one's heard of. Um, they should have done. His name's uh, Robert Edmund Grant, Professor Robert Grant, um, who was, should be famous for having taught Charles Darwin evolution. So Grant was an early evolutionary biologist. And when he was Darwin's mentor in Edinburgh, he took Darwin under his wing and, and taught him that 1820s thinking about what, how evolution happened at the time. When he came down to London, he became the first professor of zoology in England at University College London. As you look around, it's, it's quite an un unusual collection from a public museum kind of point of view because we don't have what most natural history museums have. So there's not lots of taxidermy. There's not giant dinosaurs. What we've got is thousands and thousands, as you say, skeletons, but also things in jars and fossils because it was put together to teach with. But now, it is a real treasure trove. There is so much uh, to look at, and one could spend a long time. But we're going to just come around the corner here. It's just as you come into the museum and... Well, I'll let you explain what it is, Jack. I mean, it's not, it's not the prettiest sight, is it? I think it looks gorgeous, but it's our most, probably our most publicly loved object that people come specifically to see it. And it is, is that right, really? Yeah, it's our, it's our jar of moles, which is kind of a, an unassuming... It looks like a sweetie jar, of course it's not, but a jar full to the brim of, of moles. Um, Do you know how many moles are inside? I mean, we are talking about the furry variety that, that dig up our gardens. Uh, it, it's, it, I mean, it's... It's pretty horrific, actually. It's packed. How, well, I could ask you how many do you think are in there? Well, I mean, I can see. I mean, I'm sort of judging by the little paws I can see. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have a guess at... I'm going to have a guess at 20. Very good, very good. There's 18 uh, moles in there. Uh, why are they all in a jar? Well, that's the simple answer. is that It's a very efficient way of storing moles. So a lot of the collection was, was, is a research collection or a teaching collection. So perhaps they were collected by someone who was studying mole anatomy and you don't want the world's only left-handed mole, so uh, you need lots of moles to study. Um, or they were perhaps were going to be used for a, a dissection class, so one mole per student. It's still 